In 1947, one of the greatest archaeological finds in history was located in the caves of Qumran, Israel, on the Dead Sea. This area proves the relocation of the exiled temple priests, the sons of Zadok, the Levites ordained and anointed to teach and keep the biblical canon of Scripture. Any scholar telling you they were Essenes is either illiterate or a liar. No one else, including the Pharisees, had such authority in that age to keep Scripture. There is no other find in history like it. Though the rabbis continue the new fraudulent name of Qumran, this is the biblical Bethabara. Even according to Joshua and abundant maps from the oldest to 1901, even. This is critical because this is where John the Baptist lived and operated, where Yahusha launched his ministry and was baptized, placing his endorsement on this community where the temple practice was now continued, no longer Jerusalem, and Bible canon was kept. He is the Word, and that matters. Yet he did not do so in Jerusalem at the temple because it was defiled by Hasmoneans and Pharisees and no longer kept the canon of Scripture, but changed it. Many follow this Pharisee canon today for the Old Testament, assuming it to be the Bible, even calling some Bible canon Apocrypha, meaning books outside of the Pharisee canon, a useless term. However, it is missing books from the true Bible library where the temple priests were exiled in Qumran Bethabara. We know because this has been found in archaeology, and their writings are clear. In this library, we have a time capsule that sets a solid foundation in the desire to determine just what books are and are not Bible canon in history. No Pharisee offers such, including Josephus, the Pharisee, Hasmonean, and Essene trained even by his own admission, nor the Egyptian Septuagint, as neither are from the temple priests, the only ordained to keep Bible canon. However, many out there today seize on these non-biblical canons from those not authoritative in any sense, but defined by Messiah as the enemy. Others today lose this foundation and begin to accept any book which looks like it could be Bible with little research, and that is a mistake. To start, they must ask, was it in the Bible canon of the temple priests, the only historic library of those ordained by Scripture to keep Torah and the rest of the Bible at that time? One such book is the book of modern Jasher, a modern book claiming to cover the error of the Old Testament in which Moses wrote, essentially, another book of Torah. Is it? The books of Joshua and Samuel do quote from a written book in their days that was called by both the book of Yashar in Hebrew or Jasher. The modern Jasher is already problematic because it continues into Joshua's days, proving it was not what Joshua quoted as really Torah, which preceded 
him. One of many such proofs that we will discuss. However, today, there is a modern book of Jasher which purports to be that Yasher of the Bible, the book of the right or the righteous or the just. Another way, really, to say Torah. We have heard this from many, yet none seem to offer a test of this book, nor have they bothered to consider if it is not this modern Jasher, which disappears from all of history when you bet it, except since the 1200s or so, even a fragment for that matter, never found, especially in the temple library. If not, then what is it? Is there a book that is historical canon, even Torah, from which these two patriarchs were quoting instead? One with many titles, even perhaps? Can we find specifically this book of Yashar in the Qumran Bethabara Library from the Dead Sea? Well, the modern Jasher is not found there. It's not found anywhere, not even a fragment, until the 1200s or so. So that is not Bible canon, nor could it be. It's time to identify the Bible's book of Yashar, Jasher, because we, in fact, do find it in the temple library. And it is called by many names, but we know this missing piece today as the Book of Jubilees. Wait till you see how this ties and comes together, and then we test the modern Jasher, uncovering tons of occult infusions to Jubilees and Genesis' accounts, as well as, oddly, adding Joshua which doesn't belong in that book. Not just 10 or 50, but more than 100 that we have found in reading that book. This occult lie is going down, and the true book of Yashar restored starting now. Are you ready? What a claim, huh? Now, watch us prove it. And down goes the modern book of Jasher. We have no problem just broadcasting that now and letting you know we will restore the true book of Yashar, which is the book of Jubilees. Let's dive right into the two mentions of this book of Yashar in the Old Testament. Only place that it is mentioned by name as a book in the Bible, and it's there. There's no doubting that. First, Joshua mentions it now, and this means that this book was already in circulation at the time of Joshua. That's huge, and that's a massive problem for the modern Jasher to make such a claim with no support until about the 1200s, way, way, thousands of years too late. And from Pharisees, in fact, wait till you see this, not from prophets or apostles who are the writers of Scripture. Its content will prove as the era of Genesis in both references. Thus, this is what? Well, it would be Torah. It must be. It also must be written by Moses, not some unknown author. I mean, Moses received scripture at Sinai. There will be no other author to match him, period. And the notion is so ridiculous if you just think it out. That is a massive problem from the modern Jasher, yet Jubilees was written by Moses, indeed. Even according to the temple priests, we'll show you, who used it and labeled it as, well, Torah which history we will cover in the next video, an entire video on the historicity. It did not disappear from history. But the modern Jasher, well, it never existed until modern history, maybe 1200 or so. If then even 
if that's true. And wait till you see the Pharisees are the ones responsible. And they are not biblical keepers nor writers, but rebuked by Messiah many times as representing the opposite of his word. Read Mark 7. Let's break these down. But first, what is this word jasher or yashar in Hebrew? We know that's not Hebrew, jasher, because it has a J and there's no J. But let's take a good look here. Yashar is the actual Hebrew word referring to this title or classification, whichever it is, of this writing both times. It is used as the book of Yashar. It means right, upright, righteous, just. These are all great words. Wow! So what is this then? Well, if it's the book of the upright, well, what is that in Bible history? That's the real question, right? Well, it's a classification, which is one book, according to even the temple priest. We'll show you in the next video. It is Torah. That's what it is. Yes, that's the book of the law. Torah is law or right. Righteousness. It's the same thing. This is Torah and must be for the era that it covers from what it is being quoted for. Because these are both two stories of Jacob. And that must be written by Moses. No one else. And that is what it refers to, but both of these references aren't in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, nor Deuteronomy. So they're not in what is called Torah today. The Pentateuch, a term that is completely unbiblical, never found in the Bible. The Bible never numbers Torah as five books. In fact, it refers to it as one, the book of Moses, and we'll show you that. Now, we have well covered that there is a sixth book of Torah, the book of Jubilees. It has many names. We refer to it today as the book of Jubilees, uh, or in Hebrew, really should be Jubilim. But of course, if we publish the book, you believe everybody would be like, huh, what's that, right? <laughs> Very few would even, you know, make the connection. And that's okay. Everybody's calling it Jubilees. That's what we'll call it. But it's many titles. This book has purposes. And this is important to understand what even, say, Josephus was talking about, which we'll cover next video. He wasn't talking about the book of modern Jasher. He was talking about the book of Jubilees. You'll see. We'll prove it. But one thing it most certainly is called by the temple priests is Torah. Yep. Now, we'll show you even as the exact determination of how to keep Torah in timing. Wow. Now, that's huge. We know Israel at that time of the Dead Sea Scrolls from Qumran, the temple priest writings of those sons of Zadok. That's who they say they are, by the way. They never one time say they're Essenes, but they say over a hundred times they identify as the temple priests who were exiled there. The sons of Zadok, the Levites, the sons of Levi, uh, the sons of Light, uh, tons, tons, tons. So they were exiled there, and they basically say that Israel, now what's Israel at that time, who's running the religious, and that's what it was, system at that time, in the first century. Well, the Pharisees were in charge. That's well recorded. That's not disputed at all, right? They usurped the temple in 165 BC, really, and their religion. And what does this say? It's, we're going to show you. They turned a blind eye to Torah. What part of it? Well, they believe in the Pentateuch. They use those five books, but they don't use the sixth one, the Book of Jubilees, which is also Torah. Now, it is also Yashar in every sense. Now, we're going to vet this, and we'll show you. Let's go to these specific passages. The modern Jasher fails every test you'll see. Let's begin with 2 Samuel 1.18, and we'll get to Joshua. Also, he, this is King David, that's what it's talking about, that's what this account is in Samuel, of course, but he is invoking the ancient teaching here of Jacob to his sons. That's what this is about, uh, but King David is following the same pattern. Bade them teach the children of Judah the use of the bow, the bow and arrow. 
Behold, it is written in the book of Yashar. That's the Hebrew word there, not Jasher. Where does that originate? We are told this only originates in the modern Jasher and proves its authenticity even. Well, let's take a good look at that. Let's see. Let's go to the exact words of this claim from the introduction of the modern Jasher, one of the most popular that are used. There are several books of Jasher, by the way, in modern times, all from Pharisees. Just saying. We'll get there. Where the author claims this proves the modern Jasher is more ancient, yet it has no historicity whatsoever. Now, what's up here? Let's read his words, and we'll vet them. A second mention of the book of Jasher occurs in 2 Samuel 1.17. Actually, it's 18, but that's okay. Uh, He's close enough, and in his time, whenever he wrote that, maybe he had a Bible where it said 17 instead of 18, but it doesn't matter. In contrast, this incident is not a direct quotation of an historical event from Jasher, as in the case of Joshua. So, in other words, he admits this one, is not actually proof of anything. Let's just be honest, that's what he just said. Uh, But it will be for Jubilees, we'll show you. Jasher's narrative ends long before the time of David. Well, of course it does. It purports to be Torah, with a little of Joshua, which is really, really just a glaring, nonsensical fraud right there. However, as part of his lamentation over the death of Saul and Jonathan, David referred to a comment by Jacob that is quoted in the book of Jasher. No, Yashar, right? That's that's what he's talking about. He said also, he bade them teach the children of Judah the use of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Yashar, right? Well, yeah, that's exactly what it says. However... It then says, David is referring to the dying words of Jacob to Judah in Jasher 56, 9. So you'll take a book that has no historicity before 1200 AD and try to claim that it was written thousands of years earlier and nothing, absolute crickets in history, in Bible canon, in especially the Library of the Temple Priests. There's a problem with that. Especially since he's being disingenuous and he's not addressing that this is also in the book of Jubilees. We'll show you. Only teach thy sons the use of the bow and all weapons of war in order that they may fight the battles of their brother who will rule over his enemies. If you were going to commit a fraud, you would make sure that both times Jasher was mentioned in the Old Testament would be included in your fraud, wouldn't you? Come on. I mean, it doesn't prove anything from that viewpoint. But worse, this does not originate in Jasher. It originates in the ancient text that has to be Torah. Has to. Now, check this out. He says, this passage in the Bible has no reference to anything in the Bible itself. Mm, That's a lie. But that's because he ignores the book of Jubilees, which is Torah. So we'll show you it is in Torah, in the book of Jubilees. And that is what is being quoted here. In the vacuum left by the censorship of Jubilees by the rabbis, which kind of tells you where this guy's coming from and what his paradigm is, they wrote this fraud and rewrote over centuries. And the whole time, this is all Jubilees. That's what this is referring to in Samuel not the modern Jasher. We'll show you. But it is made clear from the passage in Jasher. Yes, the passage in Jasher matches it. Of course it does. It's a, it's, actually, it's not really a good fraud, but it is a fraud nevertheless. And of course it's going to quote the two things that will give it credibility, except for it has no other credibility whatsoever. We'll show you. Only when you ignore Jubilees, which Pharisees do, it's a Pharisee thing to do, Oh, let's just go to Jubilees and let's see for ourselves. Here we go. 
Again, Genesis doesn't really tell this story. It doesn't tell you that Jacob was the master of the bow. I mean, incredible with the bow. We learn that Jacob was the master of the bow, even told by his son Judah, in fact, in this passage. There you go. Direct tie uh, to bend his bow, and of which he clearly knew that he was master of it. So, Jubilees, chapter 38. We actually covered this earlier this week in the previous video, but let's just go through this quickly. Verse 1. And after that, Judah, there you go, spake to Jacob, his father, and said unto him, this is exactly what Joshua was quoting, Bend thy bow, father, and send forth thy arrows, and cast down the adversary, and slay the enemy. And mayest thou have the power, for we shall not slay thy brother, for he is such as thou, Esau, and he is like thee. This is the war between Jacob and Esau we just covered. Let us give him this honor. Now, this is amazing that Judah had such confidence that Jacob was so good with the bow that even from a distance that he could strike and kill Esau with one shot. Can you do that? I don't know many who can, and that's with amazing modern equipment. Can you imagine what bows were like back then? Jacob was the master of the bow, and Judah knew it. There you have the elements of what, jo of what Samuel, I said Joshua before, sorry, what Samuel is quoting. There it is, right there, from the book of Jubilees, in a valid story that's credible and passes the test of history and Torah. Wow, are we going to end this series with a huge bang here. <laughs> this is incredible stuff. Verse 2, Then Jacob bent his bow and sent forth the arrow and struck Esau, his brother, on his right breast and slew him. One shot. Wow, <laughs> what a shot. But he doesn't just do this once because then he draws back and here we go. And again, he sent forth an arrow and struck Adaron, the Armenian, on the left breast, so right and then left, both in the chest, from afar, with ancient equipment. Wow! And drove him backward and slew him. It killed him. So Judah and Jacob are right here, setting forth the precedence that Jacob was in fact master of the bow and arrow, teaching his sons, especially Judah, who well knew is the one that spoke up and said, Father, go get it. He knew. Very well, that Jacob was master of the bow, not just somebody who could shoot a bow. This was an incredible talent. Indeed, he is right. You do not find that in Genesis. There's no doubt about that. He's right. But you do find it in the sixth book of Torah called Jubilees, still classified as the book of Moses or Torah. We'll talk about historicity next, don't worry, in the next video. Essentially, Samuel was quoting Jacob's mastery of the bow and arrow from Jubilees 38, an historically established book of Torah fitting to this. And it better be, it better be Torah, because Moses was given this on Mount Sinai. And if it didn't come from there, it's a fraud, period. So this must be a story that comes from Moses, period. There's, there's nothing to discuss. Sure, it has been installed in the modern Jasher. Yeah, of course, if you're committing a fraud, you're going to make sure you have that kind of stuff there. But that book is a modern concoction of Pharisees and never had soul cling to this account. So even to then make that and not mention that the account is in Jubilees is already fraud right there. Jubilees vets his Torah. This Jasher does not. The book of Yashar is Jubilees. Now let's go to Joshua, and this will entrench this. Let's read this in context, so we'll cover a little more here. Samuel just made a minor mention, really. But this one? Oh, this is huge. This quotes an historic account that is not found in Genesis. So where does it originate? Well, let's read, and we'll find out. Joshua 10, starting in verse 8. And Yahuwah said unto Joshua, Fear them not, he's talking about the Amorites, for I have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly, 
and went up from Gilgal all night. And Yahuwah discomfited them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goeth up to Beth Haron and smote them to Azekah and unto Makeda. Now, this is interesting. Notice the progression here because this is important. You're going to see this somewhere else and you're not going to see it in Jasher. Now, Joshua is in a battle here with the Amorite kings, in his case, five of them. However, there's another war with seven Amorite kings. Ah, but where's it come from? Not Genesis. So where is Joshua quoting here? He's about to quote an ancient reference next, we haven't gotten there yet even, of a similar war with similar outcome and progression, just like this. Where does he get it? He gets it from the Book of Jubilees, not the modern Jasher. In fact, those making those claims will go through them. Amazing. It's not in Genesis, though. That is true. And it came to pass, as they fled from before Israel and were in the going down to Betharon, that Yahuwah cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Azekah, and they died. They were more, or there were more, they were more, which died with hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. So Yahuwah fights with them. Now, the hailstones, that's not in the other story, but it doesn't matter. That's not the point here. The point is that they're fighting the Amorite kings and the progression is the same. The miracles here that did not occur in the other story, which we'll cover. Then spake Joshua to Yahuwah in the day when Yahuwah delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon. Now again, this is another miracle that is new to Joshua's story, not being referenced here. And this is what happens now in Joshua, period. Joshua's not quoting this, however. He hasn't quoted another book yet, all right? We haven't gotten there. So he's not saying that this is what the story, the other story, is about. He's saying it's the war with the Amorites where they get conquered by uh, Israel, by Jacob. Uh, in this case, which we'll show you. Now, let's read. And thou moon in the valley of Agilon, and the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Now, that is the key here. You are going to see, just as Joshua was fighting five Amorite kings, Jacob and his sons fought seven Amorite kings, and the same thing happened, same progression. It's not about the sun standing still, though, and that is not what is written here. We're about to see. We still haven't even gotten to it yet. It is the Amorite defeat. And you realize they're likely Nephilim. So, this is quite a hefty war with Nephilim. It is an amazing feat, yet Genesis says nothing of Jacob conquering the Amorites. Now, that's interesting. Except for one thing. One mention at Jacob's death, which we'll cover. So, it's an Amorite defeat with the specifics that Jacob, too, will pursue them and kill everyone in the same fashion. That's what happens here. Same. So, here it is. Here's, here's when Joshua invokes this. Is not this written in the book of Yashar? The word is Hebrew, Yashar. The upright, the righteous, right? Torah. Now, wait a minute. So, so the sun is standing still? Really? Well, no. He's not saying the sun is standing still in the book of Yashar. That's not what he's saying. He's saying the same thing happened there. What's he talking about? There's a war with the Amorite kings. It's right there. Now, in fact, if Joshua is quoting from it, the books preceding him regarding an Amorite battle, he can only be referring to Jacob, and this originates in Jubilees. And it really happens. It goes down much the same as in Joshua's day. But it's not the modern Jasher fraud. We'll show you. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. Some say, oh, well, that means it added to the time clock. So you have to add that. No, no. 
the time clock is set on the rising and the setting of the sun, <laughs> or really the rising of the sun to the rising of the sun, that's a full day. So if the sun doesn't go down, the day's extended, but it's still one day as far as the clock is concerned. Understand that. It follows the sun. So, and there was no day like that before it or after it, indeed, that Yahuwah hearkened unto the voice of a man, for Yahuwah fought for Israel. Now, Jacob's story is not like this in the miracles involved of the sun standing still, nor the hail or the rocks that came from heaven, no. But it is the story of the Amorite defeat of seven kings who came and attacked Jacob, Israel, and his sons. And in Joshua, it's five kings, so very similar story here. Their success is the same, following the same progression and pattern, they defeat them, they chase them, and they kill them all. That's pretty much what happens. Uh, it, first, the modern Jasher claim. Let's look at that, and then we'll go to Jubilees. The next issue to investigate, this is their writing, their words, uh, in the front of the book of Jasher, one of the more widely published ones, to the authenticity of this book is the two passages which mention the book by name. Well, he mentioned a book of Yashar, indeed. However, he fails to investigate the actual text of origin. Talk about a fraud. I mean, you're making a claim of authenticity of a book based on two stories that actually exist in another book. You're a fraud. That's what you are if you do that. Now, let's continue. The first is Joshua 10, 12, and 13. Now, we just read that, so we're not going to repeat it. Uh, you know the story. And now compare it with the following passage in Jasher 88, 63, and 64. Again, this is a major problem for this modern Jasher. Because the book of Jasher, or Yashar, or really Torah, would not contain Joshua's stories. And the writers are such illiterate frauds that they don't even realize that, that this catches them and that they're, you know, they're caught. That's it. They're already caught. This exposes their fraud right here, that they're covering Joshua's era, which Moses could not write about because he was dead. Now, who else would have written it? Now, that's an even bigger problem because all of Israel died off. All the adults died off. They lived through Moses' time, except for the younger people. So who wrote the book? Well, they don't know. Just some unknown author. Well, it should be a prophet if it's written, and it should be from a Sinai experience because that's where Moses got that stuff. So where did these guys get it, right? I mean, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So that actually immediately proves this is a fraud. And they focus on the wrong thing here, even with this, which is not even what Joshua is referring. He's talking about the Amorite battle, not the sun standing still. This is, I mean, talk about illiterate. So here they go, and they're quoting Jasher. And Joshua said in the sight of all the people, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon. Exactly Joshua's words, pretty much. And thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. Yep, Joshua's words. Until the nation shall have revenged itself upon its enemies. This is called copying. This is called fraud. They just copied Joshua. That's what they did. Uh, no wonder it seems the same. All the accounts are in tandem. Yeah, when you copy another text, <laughs> an ancient text, for a modern concoction by Pharisees, yeah, it kind of looks the same. It's a miracle. How could that be? And the sun stood still in the midst of the heavens, and it stood still six and thirty moments. Really? Because the time doesn't actually add up here. But what do I know? And the moon also stood still and hastened not to go down a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord, Yahuwah, hearkened to the voice of man. For the Lord fought for Israel. Those are literally, that's Joshua's words. They basically just ripped off Joshua here. That's what they're doing. And then saying, oh, well, Joshua quoted our book because we have the same language that we copied uh, more than 2,000 years later. 
oh, that makes a lot of sense. Why don't we all just buy that? That sounds like just a perfect explanation, don't you think? Literally, the modern Jasher is a ripoff. It's a fraud. However, Joshua is not even speaking of this story of the sun standing still. It's not what this is about. That never happened before. Joshua is saying this is something that happened before in a book written before his time. Duh! How can they not read? Well, we know how. They're Pharisees and they're liars. Okay, we'll show you the story in Jubilees and you'll see for yourself. A comparison of the text preceding also shows a high degree of correlation. You mean because you copied it. Yeah, right. Indicating that much more than a couple of verses was probably quoted by the Bible writer. Uh, Yeah, so Joshua quoted a book 2,000 years after he wrote his book. It's a miracle. Wow. (laughs) Or, you know, or perhaps Jasher somehow existed in history, but disappeared and is not found in one even shred of evidence anywhere except for these two mentions, which is what the Pharisees are exploiting because they censored Jubilees and now they're trying to replace Jubilees, and we'll show you. One major problem, Torah, books written by Moses, which Jasher purports to do. That's the claim they're really making, without making it, because they, they know they can't, but that's what they're really making. You, you can't have this writing of this time frame without it being called Torah. It's got to be written by Moses. This was revealed to him by Yahuwah and by an angel from heaven on Mount Sinai. Where is that encounter here? Who is this author? that they are even better than Moses, that they had some personal experience somewhere, somehow, even greater. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Ridiculous and fraud. So, Yashar, the book of right, or really law, or Torah, would have to be what this is. They do not include Joshua after Moses' death. And that is indisputable and already proves us wrong. Moses wrote Torah and the story ends before Joshua takes Israel into the promised land, period. The second witness to that book of Torah, Genesis, is Jubilees. And that is the Yashar here, not a fraud, who copied Joshua out of place ignorantly. They couldn't even figure that out. Talk about ridiculously stupid But let's go to Jubilees and we'll see this story for ourselves. Jubilees 34 is the account in which Joshua is referencing. Verse 1. And in the sixth year of this week, notice the way the Jubilees constantly starts out chapter after chapter, dating things, and even within, and as Anno Mundi throughout. That's going to become important in the next video. Remember that. The week of this 44th Jubilee, Jacob sent his sons to pasture their sheep and his servants with them to the pastures of Shechem. And the seven kings of the Amorites, so not five as in the days of Joshua. But Joshua's quoting this story of the battle with the Amorites that Jacob had. But you see, this is not in Genesis. However, we're going to show you, Genesis does affirm this happened. Ah, doesn't give the account, but Jacob himself affirms it. We'll see. So the seven kings of the Amorites assembled themselves together against them to slay them, hiding themselves under the trees, and to take their cattle as prey. Exactly what happens in Joshua, really. They're attacked by the Amorites. Now, this is the parallel in which Joshua refers, and this can be proven to have been written prior to Joshua. See, that's, that's the difference. Jubilees fits the bill. The modern Jasher fails miserably. Now let's continue. And Jacob and Levi and Judah and Joseph were in the house with Isaac their father, for his spirit was sorrowful, and they could not leave him. And Benjamin was the youngest, and for this reason remained with his father. 
And there came the king of Tapu, and the king of Aressa, and the king of Saragon, and the king of Silo, and the king of Gaas, and the king of Beth Haron, and the king of Manasakir. These are the same areas essentially as Joshua. See, this is the same story repeated, but this is the ancient one. This happened to Jacob in his time. And now Joshua has the same battle with the same Amorites in the same area. Many years later, 400 plus years later, right? Okay, so, and all those who dwell in these mountains and who dwell in the woods in the land of Canaan. So, same areas essentially of Joshua and same Amorites. His was five kings, this is seven, but this is what he refers. And they announced this to Jacob, saying, Behold, the kings of the Amorites have surrounded thy sons and plundered their herds. And he arose from his house, he and his three sons, and all the servants of his father, and his own servants, and he went against them with six thousand men who carried swords. Is there precedent for that? Actually, yes. Uh, if you look at the story of uh, Jacob and Esau in the battle that we covered, uh, just last video I think it was, um, there were 4,000 men on Esau's side just right there. So yes, they were able to garner those kinds of numbers back in that day. This is where we can follow the same progression as Joshua, and this is what he references. Verse 7, And he slew them in the pastures of Shechem, just as Joshua, and pursued them, or those who fled, just as Joshua, same, and he slew them with the edge of the sword, same as Joshua. And he slew Aressa and Tapu, Saragan, Silo, Emanasakar, uh, or however you say his name, and Gagaas. And he recovered his hurts. There you go. And he prevailed over them, Jacob did, and his, and his people, and imposed tribute on them that they should pay him tribute. Remember that. Ding, 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 ding. That's a big bell right there, baby. The Amorites paid tribute to Jacob. Sound crazy? Oh, you just wait. This is confirmed in Genesis. Though the story is not in Genesis, the whole war is not there, but the tribute is. Oh, wow. Why? Because Moses wrote both books together, and he said he did. He writes that in Jubilees as he does in Genesis. There's no questioning it, really. Five fruit products of their land, and he built Robel and Tamna Terrace, and he returned in peace and made peace with them, and they became his servants until the day that he and his sons went down into Egypt. There you go. So is this a true story? Are we sure? I mean, did Jubilees just make this up? I know we get this. Every time we see a story in Jubilees that's not in Genesis, we hear from, especially, you know, some illiterate blowhard uh, who tries to agitate this channel. Um, there, there are many, but there's one especially who's just ridiculous. And, you know, the reality is, we're going to show you. This is quoted in Genesis, according to Jacob, of course. But what would he know? How would he know that he defeated the Amorite kings? Oh, that's what they'll say next, right? <laughs> yeah, they're that stupid. But likely these Amorites were Nephilim giants, or at least some among them. Wow. This is amazing. This is a monumental story. But could it be true? Let's go to Genesis and let's see for ourselves. This is exciting because what are we going to see? We're going to see that Genesis affirms Jubilees as Torah right here. Wow. Open your Bible to Genesis 48, 21, and 22. This is monumental, folks. Here it is. The proof many have been demanding about Jubilees. Here it is, folks. And this is firm. And no one can disprove this. Jacob is about to quote a history that does not come from Genesis. It doesn't come from his story otherwise. Because Moses placed that story, that full account, in Jubilees and then references it here in Genesis. This proves the book of Jubilees as Torah, quoted by Torah. Boom. Here we go. 
And Israel, Jacob, said unto Joseph, Behold, I die, but Elohim shall be with you, and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren. He loved Joseph the most, there's no doubt about that. And again, he also set Ephraim, Joseph's actually younger son, it wasn't even his oldest, because that's Manasseh, but he set Ephraim with the birthright, because Reuben had lost it. Uh, we didn't actually get to that in this series, I don't think we're going to, but there's uh, a story in Jubilees that explains how Reuben lost his birthright, sleeping with his father's uh, concubine, basically, servant, maidservant uh, of sort. Um, okay, so here we go, here he goes, which... So he's going to pay him one portion above thy brethren. Where does this money come from? The money comes from the battle of the Amorites who paid him tribute. Which means it happened, folks. It's real. It's truth. And it affirms the book of Jubilees. Wow. Okay. Which I took out of the hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. He's talking about the tribute that they paid to him. There you go. Again, Jacob's bow is also mentioned in Samuel as well. And what's this? Here we go. Where does Torah ever say Jacob defeated Amorites and received tribute? It's not in Genesis. It's not there. Yet this is Torah, quoting Torah. Uh Uh-oh. That's because it's in the book of Jubilees, which is Torah. Proven right here in Genesis. Moses says Jacob, quoting Jubilees, account here as Torah, on Torah. There you go. Why? Because he wrote them together. He didn't necessarily put every story in both. They are not mirror images of each other. There's more details on a lot of things in one book or the other. Jubilees especially has a lot of detail, more than Genesis, but this proves Moses quoted Jubilees and Jubilees must have been written by Moses as Torah. This proves then Jubilees is Torah, and this proves the origin of Joshua, who was quoting Moses' books here, Torah, the book of Yashar, specifically, though that within, called the book of Jubilees. Wow. There you go. Is this book inspired? Absolutely. 100% provably and documented in Genesis. Wow. Is it canon? It must be for Jacob's story to quote it. Is it the Bible? It always has been. No Catholic council and no Pharisee can change that, though they have tried. So the two passages that mention the book of Yashar, Jasher, really a bad translation, are never referring to a modern Pharisee concoction called the Book of Jasher, but directly to the Book of Jubilees, which has many titles, and is Yashar, the Book of Righteous, Just, Law, Even, or Torah. And that is even according to Moses in Genesis. Done. So we can all see the origin of Joshua, Samuel, in regards to this book of Yashar. And even Jacob's quote of his own story, which Moses then placed in Jubilees and not Genesis, proves the book of Jubilees is Torah. According to Joshua and Samuel, the book of Yashar, or the book of the right, upright, law, Torah. Same thing. It was written by Moses or Jacob, could not have quoted his story from a different book from Genesis by someone else, especially not a Pharisee, in 150 BC, which is another stupid line of these same idiotic Pharisees who think they can pawn off this modern Jasher as scripture. Oh, no, they don't. We are not done, however. We're just getting started in this testing, and Jasher has already failed. In the next video, we are going to explore the historicity of, let's look at the book of Jubilees, versus that of the modern 
Jasher, especially when you take away these two references, which Jubilees doesn't even need to be called Torah. How about that? Uh, which are clearly, however, belonging to Jubilees and not the modern Jasher. And yes, we will also address Second Timothy as well uh, in that video. It cannot hold these claims. It just can't, Jasher, the modern Jasher. Without those, it's just a modern fraud, and that is all that is left. After that, we will take you through the book of Jasher. We're not going to read it. We're not going to go through it from that standpoint. We're not going to treat it like scripture because it's not. However, we're going to take you on a quick tour, commentary of sort, pointing out one occult infusion after the other, one lie after the other, one discrepancy after another. This book is riddled with problems, as it is a very poor fraud, and if you test it, you'll see that. So much so, that we have more than, well, 100. Yeah, that's what I said. But we will keep it to 25 in each video, over four videos, so it's palatable. But yes, it is that much, folks. In fact, it's more. We've narrowed it down to 100. That's how bad this book is. Talk about a blatant book of error in fraud. It is riddled with problems. It is stealing the place of the book of Jubilees, especially with these two mentions. As Yashar mentioned in Joshua and Samuel, and more on that too, we're not done there. By the end of these videos, you will never question what Yashar is in the Bible. Again, nor whether the modern Jasher is a fraud, even if the usual idiots, especially dunderhead failure blogs uh, that try to pick and pick and pick and pick at this point, that point, you know, it's funny. You'll make a hundred points and, well, they'll say, oh, well, we disproved six uh, that we don't agree with. Uh, what about the other 94? Hello? Talk about ridiculous. I mean, they can't even think any logical, rational sense, nor do they want to, because they're just here to agitate. We know that. If you only agree with a few, well, then you should have a major problem with the modern Jasher as credible, period. Not much to discuss after that. We hope everyone has learned some very valuable information here today. Jubilees is Torah, indeed, with actual mentions right there in Joshua and Samuel. Oh, don't worry, we're not done with that. But also in Genesis, as Moses, in Genesis, quotes Moses in Jubilees. Jacob is doing the actual speaking, but Moses wrote both. Which has to be the case. Proven. Done. Wow. This is getting good and will be continued very soon as these six videos will come back to back over the next probably two weeks or, uh, or so at most, maybe quicker if, if we get them out quicker, we will settle this debate once and for all. There is no debate. We have over 365 videos on this channel, one for every day of the year now. Many just as profound, with some 50 or so in Tagalog for Filipinos, and now six in Spanish to start. We also have been setting up subtitles for 20 languages or so on most of our videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications of new uploads. Join our email list as YouTube fails to notify often, and we will notify you ourselves at thegodculture.com. Just fill in the pop-up. We now have alternative platforms for videos alternatives to YouTube on Rumble and Utreon, with actually more coming. And our new podcast is also available for all of our videos as well. All links in the description box. Friend us on Facebook at The God Culture, space hyphen space original. If you prefer an alternative, we have Parlor now, link below. We now have five books published internationally being read in over 100 countries with our new release, available. Rest, the 400 plus page case for Sabbath. We also have launched Ophir Philippines Coffee Table book in the US, Canada, UK, and many overseas markets on Amazon. And it is available in hardcover or softcover over there. 
Additionally, we launched the Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, with color maps and interior, as so many have requested that overseas, because we only had black and white before. But the black and white is still there as well for a lower price point. We already have that in the Philippines in color, so, but we have that available on Amazon in hardcover and softcover as well, if you wish. All books, including Solomon's Treasure, are now free in ebook. Just go to ophirinstitute.com for all the links for your area for all of our books. More coming soon. Thank you for watching. Now, always remember prove all things for yourself. Yah bless to everyone. The Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, named by the temple priests in Qumran as the source of the exact determination of how to keep Torah's calendar in the Damascus document. Yes, they called it Torah and used it as such. This book renders the very first map of the world, the most ancient geography in all of history. Jubilees also known as the Book of Division, as Noah partitions the entire earth to his three sons, finds the Garden of Eden in the Philippines, pinpoints the seat of Gog of Magog's power, demonstrates continental divides originate with Noah and much more. It is the second witness to Genesis and Torah and concurs. It tests as Torah and we encourage you to review this full text for yourself in the beginning of this book. It was the priests who were exiled from the temple who lived in Qumran, known in Bible times as Bethabara, where Messiah was baptized and John the Baptist of temple priestly caste lived and operated. As these were his fellow Levite priests exiled from the temple, who continued to keep scripture there, as well as operate a function compound modeled in part after the temple. This is the only historic library of precedence for the Old Testament canon in ancient history, yet explained away in willing ignorance, just as 2 Peter 3 warned. Based on the R.H. Charles translation from the Ethiopic, this book will enlighten and its revelation will rock your world. 
As all 50 chapters appear in this book with curated and edited margin notes. In large print Bible format, easy to read. This 288 page quality paperback has a high resolution section of maps that represent the world's oldest map by Noah. Read it and test it for yourself, and you will likely find, as we have, this book is inspired, even canon, in history. Available free worldwide in ebook or purchase a print copy today on Shopee Philippines or Amazon internationally. Just go to bookofjubilees.org and the links are there for your area. We also offer bundle pricing with our other books in the Philippines. Our books are already expanding now, being read in 52 countries and more than half of the provinces in the Philippines. Join thousands who are finding this useful in their lives.